Am I streaming or am I streaming? <laughs> I don't exactly know. I hate it when that happens. Oh, I'm live on twitch.tv? <laughs> okay, well. Um, I, I'm guessing it's any percent, unless there was some last second snipe. Getting a soup of artifacts. I have no idea what that means. Are we good to go? I don't know, did you want to, like, calibrate the stream or anything? There was a snipe, it's worthless, oh my gosh. Awesome. So, we are ready? I don't know, should I be looking at Discord or Twitch chat? I'm trying to keep my eye on both and the stream preview, and it's a little tough. Well, Warpless is the easier run, so the fact that it's coming up on 5 a.m. and I haven't slept, thank you to the sniper. <laughs> Was it you, Katsumo? Thank you. Um, so yeah, the estimate for Warpless would be one hour flat. Are, are you ready? I guess I'm ready. Again, trying to keep an eye on both Discord. And stream chat and everything else. Ready, okay. All right, let me minimize Discord then since you're in Twitch chat. Okay, time starts at new game select. So five. Four, three, two, one, go. I'm Emerald Alley, this is Hugh Warplus, apparently. We start off with a story dump. Dearest Hugh. Oh, I've had the most dreadful luck. I feel terrible that you've been left alone all this time. A traitorous Dr. Gray tried to steal the animal spectrum, a ring I developed to allow perception and alteration of color. Some call them impossible twins. <laughs> impossible for Dr. Gray to make. Anyway, something went wrong. I turned a strange shade and became invisible. The ring, it fractured, scattering colored shards far and wide. I stayed at home for many weeks, watching, waiting, existing in these color planes. I couldn't speak to you, nor interact with anything in the mono world. So I left. I left for the university where I hid away the colored tools I had created. Is everything okay? I pray you have found what is left of the ring. So that letter right there from the mother of the titular character Hugh really sets out the story. She's a researcher into color in this world that only exists in black and white. And she created a device to help manipulate color. And throughout the game, we will be reassembling that device. Here's the first shard, light blue. Video stream for me is really choppy. I... <laughs> I don't know what to say about that because my OBS shows no drop frames. Since the beginning, we have pointed to this target and declared it yours. Steady bitrate and no drop frames on my end. Unquestioned understanding which connects us. But are you really seeing blue in the same way? Continue. If it's unwatchable, then let me sleep, <laughs> quite frankly. Everyone in this world sees nothing but a shade of grey. You can't really see here. This, this is why we're here. So coming to this cave, this is the main hub of the game. We would ordinarily in the any percent run do restart level after grabbing the light blue shard, but in Warplus that's disallowed. We would also restart level to get past that minor dude to despawn him, 
but it's disallowed for all purposes in this category, so we have to wait for him to shuffle off. When you enter a cave expecting a waterfall, the chances are your expectations will be met. But if you discard those expectations, don't you think instead the cave will be full of surprises? I ask to you, please, to Well, that's disappointing, but do what you gotta do. And I need you to see the world zero drop frames, steady 16 to 1800 bit rate. It always fluctuates a little. Oops, run the wrong way there. Like, this is the most stable stream I've had this year <laughs> in terms of frame rate and bit rate and all that. It looks absolutely perfect on my end. Not even getting any video. You can still hear my voice, though? That's super weird. Ah, I nailed a skip and nobody saw it. <laughs> it sucks. It kind of sucks because this is a pretty good start. <laughs> it's okay now? Okay. Like, okay, okay? Or just you can actually see it now and it's still choppy and shitty. Okay, well, if the timer kept going, then, you know, the time is going to be accurate because I never stopped. <laughs> so we've got our second color shard now, purple. You apparently missed all of the puzzles that use just the blue shard, but that's okay. There will be more. Did you know, Ford, that purple is at the very end of the visible spectrum? It's the hardest color for our eyes to distinguish. Now, I'm guessing you probably nuked the timer, and that's fine. Like I said, my practice runs earlier tonight were both really bad, so I wasn't uh, wasn't terribly relishing running against the timer anyway. Timer kept running. Oh no! I better not PB then, because I'm not doing local recording. Note to self, miss every you skip at least once. Me. You're reading this letter, or, or at least I hope you are. I'm sorry, but existing on this So we're in the section with blue and purple. This is the shortest section. There are only a handful of puzzles that use these two shards. So now that you can actually see the game, you can see that the main conceit in puzzle solving and traversal is to change the background of each room, the sky, if you will to whichever color. Ah, I kind of got out of my rhythm there. And that makes all objects of that color disappear. You can see it blue disappears, now purple disappears, now blue disappears. And that's already the end of that section. Yeah, the movement tech whenever you go up a hill in this game or a slope is bunny hopping. Jump again right as soon as you hit the ground. It's not faster going downhill. It's actually quite a bit slower. In the any percent run, we would use a map warp to get back to the cave hub. Map warps are very much intended. They're supposed to be part of the game, but casual players tend not to know the about them in their first playthrough. I certainly didn't in mine. So that's why, I, that's one of the things I like about this category, is that it tends to most closely resemble a normal, air quotes, normal playthrough of the game. Because casual players tend not to know about the map warps. The one major glitch we have for this game is death warps, which they're warps, so no warps and warpless. 
and I'm talking over it, but this category also allows us to hear this game's full and really nice story. Like that letter there, there's various letters from mom throughout the world. We will still skip one of them, which I hate. But we'll hear most of them. Dr. Gray seemed the case that one was about the before. genesis of Dr. Gray in Hugh's mother's life. Our fires burnt brightest when we worked together. It's like we could have achieved anything. We discovered more about color than I could ever have imagined. We split light from that spectrum he painted. We loved. We worked long hours and soon our goal became all consuming. We were that good. I was going to say a buck for every death if this was um, any percent, since there's required deaths in any percent. Um, I might not die at all <laughs> in the Warpless run. I certainly shouldn't die at all. So I'll just probably toss a fiver in the pot after the run. I certainly want to give something. It's a very important cause. This is one of my favorite sections of the run, just very well optimized, lots of really tight movements. That being one of them, this also being one of them. I've seen this room confound casual players, certainly confounded me on my first playthrough. This next room here would have one of the death orbs, and it's one of the harder ones to achieve. But since this is warpless, no worries. It's one of the harder ones to achieve, but it's one of the better ones to get, because you... Whenever you do a death warp, you have to sit through the entire death animation. You can't cancel it in any way. But the death animation is about 7-8 seconds long, I want to say. Running through this room takes a lot more than 7 seconds, so it's a major time save for... Any percent run. You can also death warp in this run, but there's a cool unintended solution, even in warpless. You're supposed to run into that purple area on the left there, but you do not have to. I found that out completely by accident. I dispelled the purple line of bricks on the bottom there by accident, and I wound up in that safe spot. Yeah, I guess we'll see, Katsumo, but I certainly, as I say, shouldn't die at all in the warpless run but yeah i wound up in that safe spot by accident and i was like wow can i actually save this and then i pulled out the timer to see if it was faster than the conventional solution i was overjoyed to find out that it is and a new uh you know if you're talking like valve portal they call those ninja solutions i always like that term a new ninja solution was born it's not so much a skip you're still basically doing the room. You're just doing it in an extra fast way. So our next color is pink. We now have four shards. Puzzles are starting to get a little more complex. But one thing I do like about this game is while there's a general increase in puzzle difficulty from the beginning of the game to the end, it's not absolute. There are some really easy puzzles toward the end of the game. So some of them, I blanch at even calling them puzzles. They're just rooms. I don't remember much after that day in the past. Ross. I do know that Dr. Gray and I spent many a time together. I would compliment him on his work, and his cheeks would flush with a pinkness. <laughs> He'd notice and change the subject from bad. This work we were doing together, it didn't feel much like work. New strat here is to go ahead of that blue block by shifting while it's in midair. Anytime an object that's dictated only by gravity uh, is falling and you shift to that color, it will freeze the object in place until you shift to a different color and make it visible again. If the object moves on a scripted path that isn't related to gravity, it doesn't work that way. But we will see a couple of other examples of that later on. Thank 
This is a room that's super hard your first time playing and super easy every time after that. It's really an inventive take on a maze. There's another little, I guess you could call that a bit of tech. Um, whenever you're shifted away from an object's color and you push something onto where that object would be, you can move two objects at the same time. We will do that a lot. And pushing is generally faster than pulling. Anytime you have either a block that's two or more units high or a low ceiling over your head, you can jump push, which is faster than normal pushing. Here's a skip. There's the first death. <laughs> I found this skip, and there's been a uh, buffer strat developed for it, but I prefer to just go for it. Eh, second try, that's acceptable for a marathon. I prefer to just go for it, and you know, if I'm running for PB attempts or whatnot, just kill the run if I miss it. Because the buffer strat is super slow. It's way more consistent, but it's super slow. Ah, okay, that was really weird. And I'm pretty consistent at that skip as is. I get it first try a lot. <laughs> Do you have that Krusty the Clown image I saw earlier? That is absolutely fine for the face cam slot, if you ask me. <laughs> Second try is first try after first try. And didn't I say that like a hundred times during the practice runs earlier, Katsuma? Yeah, second try is okay in a marathon. There was one of the practice runs where I got like everything second try. Like not third try, not fourth try. They were always second try. Right, well, second try is okay in a marathon. Second try is okay in a marathon. This room, I've recently changed how to do this room because I do it the correct way now. And I still remember the incorrect way and I'm really... Not used to doing it the correct way. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. I shouldn't have pushed those. Because I have to go back up and push them now anyway. But that's okay. That's okay, too. I really need to get a lot better at this room. <laughs> so I do have Reki in all three categories for this game, but I think they're all pretty beatable. My PB slash Reki for Warpless is 55.59. For any percent, 46.55. And for the 100%, 110.52. I would have submitted 100% for the category bid war for this, except I hadn't run it yet when submissions for this were open. I will be including it in my submission for SGDQ. I very much hope to get this game into SGDQ. Next color is red. This is another spot where in any percent we would map warp back to the cave hub, but not in warpless. Did you know, Paul, that every language first has a word for black and for white, for dark and for light? The first color described afterwards is always red. The color of blood and wine. The color of anger. The anger I felt when I was told my experiments had gone too far. When Dr. Gray sided with the university, stopping my research altogether. For 
of all our languages, for all our ways to communicate. It's funny how sometimes we simply cannot. It leads people to do things they regret, to fear, to break, to forget to forget to forget. That's a letter we ordinarily do not hear in the any percent run. Yeah, the any percent run with all its warps is very well optimized and very fast, but it really chops the story up into a lot of pieces. It's really hard for a first time viewer to make sense of it. The university claimed my experiments were unethical, that altering the fabric of our reality was dangerous. They were unflinching. My research was confiscated and my contract terminated. Following my expulsion, I was left with no choice but to uproot and move us both far away. I knew of a small fishing village a boat ride from the university, so I had hope that my reputation wouldn't precede me. You and I moved into a humble home, which is now where we spent most of your childhood. This one's pretty simple, I'll just need different colors on each switch, as opposed to the doors up above. Very easily achieved. I have died in this room before, which is really stupid. This is not a room you should be dying in. That shift to red there at the very end is actually necessary if you're on the fastest cycle, which I was there, because if you don't shift to red there, there is a red skull that will fall through there and kill you. This is all very straightforward in this section, just putting blocks on switches and moving other blocks and having a lot of fun. This level introduces the Thwomps. I just sort of idly called them that one day because they reminded me of the Thwomps from Mario. And then a fellow runner of this game, Modiceus, who has um, dived into the code a little bit, told me that that's literally what they're called in the game, too. Small example right there of another piece of movement tech. You can change horizontal direction while you're in the midst of a jump. There is a skip later on that will use that little bit of tech uh, much more vividly. That's one thing to note. For sure. uh, come on for sure, that vertical momentum is never a thing in this game. It's simply, it, it doesn't matter, it's simply not a thing. Horizontal momentum, however, whether you have a running start going into your jumps, matters a great deal. Even some intended solutions are not possible without running starts. So like with these thwomps moving upward, if I jump while it's moving upward, it's still the same jump. There's no vertical momentum. And if you run before jumping, you can jump a whole heck of a lot further. So this room utilizes that exploit I mentioned earlier about when an object is dictated by gravity, it will freeze in place when you change to its color. What we need to do is get that light blue block to the bottom of the room. The intended solution is to push it through this little obstacle course of thwomps with these little safe spaces on the side to hide when they're falling. But check out how we're gonna do it here. We come to the bottom. Aggroing all the thwomps along the way. Look at where it is. I switched to blue and see where it is. It stayed in its relative space in the room, even though it went from ab above the thwomp to below it. I don't consider that a glitch. I did do this run for a glitchless event a short while ago. That, is, that to me is an exploit, not a glitch. And, you know, there's a, there's a difference between the two. 
The glitch is an entirely emergent, unintended mechanic like the death orbs? That to me is an exploit. That's an intended mechanic used in an unintended way. We will see another example of that later on. There is actually a colorblind mode for this game. Vicious Cave, it's simple, but pretty elegant. If you turn on the colorblind mode, Dusty old tomes All of the colored objects in the world and the this colored wheel have the symbols on them. So you can match the symbols instead of the colors. It's a fairly simple solution, but I think it's elegant. Other colors were detailed at length, but not these. It was never mentioned at all. The word simply didn't exist. It could be not distinguished here. Without the words describing, I can't even be sure they could see it at all. And what Mom was just talking about there, an ancient society that could not, that had no record of the color blue, that's actually based on fact. There was a. I can't remember the name of the society, but they lived in what is today Greece? And. You know, linguists and philosophers studying their the writings they left behind found just exactly what she was talking about that they had no equivalent word for blue reinvent the color wheel boo earns that's all right like I was saying there's easy puzzles strewn throughout this one's pretty gosh darn easy This, uh, yeah, okay. This room always makes me monk ass a little. I've gotten much better at it than I used to be, but still kind of sucky. There we go, not too bad. It's definitely harder than it looks. It look, probably looked pretty trivial, but those jumps need pretty tight timing to make it all the way from one block to the next and it, this game also has a tendency to eat jump inputs so you could end up just falling on the spikes anyway you can get a jump push there with that second purple block where it is and check this out you're supposed to put a block on those spikes but since you can change direction in midair when jumping you do not have to and that block is not close enough I actually found that little bit of tech in my first playthrough. And I was so disappointed when I started running the game that the existing runner community already knew about it. This I call the Indiana Jones room. It very much evokes that scene in the Indiana Jones movie where he's running from the big boulder. I could also call it the Dying Light room. I have a friend who runs that game, has had world record in it. There's a, a line in the uh, parkour tutorial where one of the characters says to the player character, if you stop, you're probably dead. And that's what happens here. And I swear to God, I never used to notice the screen shaking in that room. I think I was probably running against an any percent 52 the first time I noticed it. My current PP is a 46. African movie that was a take on the Prince movie Purple Rain called Rain the Color Blue with a Little Red in it. Because they had no native word for purple. That's awesome. Fall on the spikes? I will not fall on the spikes. Makes colors yellow. Color wheel is almost complete. I definitely, I love watching casual players play this game. I have found strats from 
watching casual players from watching people approach this game with new eyes. Casual players tend to think the color wheel is the end of the game. It's not. Spring was around the corner. Yellow daffodils poked through the dirt in our backyard. As time moved, my resentment slowly slipped away. I continued my research from home. Without Dr. Gray, work was slow, but I still made progress. One day, Paul, when you were sleeping, I watched my dad. I was on the cusp of a breakdown, and you were the last person left to see it. I was so excited for the both of us. All right. Now we come to probably my favorite section in the run. There's so many cool strats in this area. Get ready for some freaking lasers. My research led me to tales of a long lost civilization. Saw a couple in that previous room. There, there will be many more soon. Pioneering electricity many years before we discovered it. Strangely, though, this civilization is said to have felt no pain. They knew of pain. That's BS. <laughs> yet had not experienced it themselves. Explaining to them the sensation of pain is like me explaining color to someone that can only see in black and white. I wonder, Paul, if we will be able to share in our experiences of color. No. That was almost bad. First little trick here. It's not so much a trick as just an optimizing movement. Just to one cycle this. Oh, those little platforms below the colored blocks in case you, you know, get stuck during a laser cycle, but you don't need to use them. This is a pretty cool skip here. Nice. You're supposed to push that orange block into the spike pit, but you don't have to. It requires a coyote time jump. <laughs> okay, I screwed this up. Ah, damn, that sucks. This one saves a lot of time, but I messed up one of the switches. It should have been to pink rather than purple. Ah, that's okay. Wouldn't be a marathon run if everything went, went okay. There's actually a skip you can do in this run. It only saves about a second, and I'm like maybe 1% at it. It's to go directly through those two lasers, the red and yellow there. I will do a similar skip soon. Damn, that sucks. You only get one shot at the fast cycle in this room. No matter if you exit and re-enter, the platforms will not be on the same cycle. It's only once per playthrough you can get this fast cycle. You can see I'm on a slow as hell cycle right now. Hopefully we'll get this first try. This is a crazy solution. We call this room Laser Madness. So far, so good. Yeah, I got the harder one first try, the easier one second try. Isn't that how it always goes? This room's kind of fun. You can do a death warp in this room. It does not save or lose any time. <laughs> it's exactly as fast. Maybe it's a few frames faster than the solution. There's a very powerful death warp in this room that you can save a ton of time doing it. But we're doing warpless, so we're not going to do it. I don't like this section quite as much in Warpless as I do in any percent, but it's still a good one. I have to wait that one out a little bit. Not 
the best door cycle there, but good enough. I already have world record. In this category, I have record by over three minutes, so... A few frames... I don't think this game is ever going to be optimized down to the frame anyway, so... Unless a lot of really, really good runners take it up. Thwomps with laser eyes, you know it. Alright, so in this room we get our last color, which is green. And we will do a series of puzzle rooms that are ordinarily skipped. I say ordinarily because the any percent run is more commonly done. But a uh, series of puzzle rooms that are skipped altogether in the any percent room run, we do them in the warpless run. I actually theorized and asked for the warpless category before the death warps were found. Just so we could have a run where we do every puzzle room and we hear more or less all of the story. The next area we need to get to is the lighthouse. You can just warp to the town and get there. I suspect that one is a developer oversight. So skip in this next room that I am awful at. I will try it once. Almost. I almost had it. But I really am bad at it. But you at least get the idea from the half or so of it I was able to do. So this game uses coyote time, as I mentioned. It's a little bit different than other platformers, though, because it's not only about as you run off the edge of a platform, it also has coyote time for when a platform disappears. That's really bad, missing this one. But I'll blame it on the fact that I was talking. This game also has coyote time for when a platform disappears beneath your feet. You can still react as though it were there for a very small window, just a few frames, I'm sure. But it enables skips like the one I'm going to do this time, right? Right. The intended solution is to move that yellow block over the laser, but you do not have to. And that is one of the strats I found from watching a casual player. They were not able to pull that off, but they did attempt that, thinking it was the only way to do the room. That's, you know... What casual players can do for you in terms of speedrun you know, speed strats, they approach things with new eyes. They think about, you know, especially in a puzzle game, they think about puzzle solutions in a way you probably haven't for some time as an active runner. It's possible to do this room without ever turning off the lasers. It is sadistically difficult. It's also possible to do this room without turning off the lasers. It's not quite as difficult, but it's way slower. So I would never I would never do it in a run, but somebody told me in my chat once that it was possible. I'm like, no way. So I tried it and yes way, it is possible.
I screwed up. That needs to be on. Luckily, here. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, luckily, that wasn't a terrible screw up. It was kind of a bad screw up, but I managed to not have to redo the room. There's that. So the intended path from here is to go through another room with a letter from mom in it. That's the one we skip. I'm almost sorry I found this because we have to skip a letter now, but it's faster to climb out of the cave and access the lighthouse from the town. And it's not a little bit faster. This saves, I can't remember exactly. It's between 10 and 15 seconds, which is a pretty nice chunky time save. It's, I think it's like 11 or 12. That room with the letter from mom in it just stretches on forever and ever. And in the warps run, you would just warp to the town using the map and do that. You take this boat to the university because that's where, if you remember the first letter, in the very first area of the game, the dream cave as I call it, this is where Hugh's mother said she was going. So we're trying to reunite with her. There's an NPC who will tell us we have to climb our way up to the university. You didn't think we could just ride a cable car, did you? No. There are some very cool puzzle solutions in university. Go through the door, child. If a tree stands in the woods and nobody's there to see it, does that tree exist? Does it have color and form? Does it matter? Doesn't matter. This journey has been difficult, Hugh. And whilst I have trodden a lost, winding path, I feel no closer to the truth I was after. No matter how long you... That's the game eating a jump input. Thankfully, there weren't spikes below me. If truth does exist in our minds, then I feel there may be one that I have neglected. All this time, you've been alone, and now uprooted, on a journey for my cause. For what? So that I could see the world a little clearer? I do hope, in the end, it was worth it. For both of us. So there's the next concept I call those trampolines. I don't know what they're officially called in the game's code or anything. They change color as you jump on them. And they always change color in the same order. It's the order of the color wheel going clockwise. And they always play the same tones when they reach the same color. Which is why I'd like to learn this section of the game blindfolded. I'm pretty sure I could do it. Just have to get rid of them before going in these little holes here. Or else he would bounce off the trampolines and into the spikes up above. That was very slow, but whatever. <clears throat> okay, that was close. This is another strat I found from a casual player. Jumping below these rock things instead of shifting colors to make them disappear. It's a lot harder. It's not it's not a lot. Well, it is a lot harder, but it's not really that bad. The safe way to get past them would be to shift to those colors and make them disappear. You have to turn all of these to the same color that isn't red. Orange is the fastest, because it's the nearest color after red on the color wheel. Been a while since that's happened. You have to change color here without dying, of course. There is a safe way to do it, but it's slower. I 
that is way too far. Ugh, this is very slow. This is a room that trips up a lot of casual players because they don't realize that all the blocks have to be light blue. You can sort of guess the first time through here that they all have to be the same color, but they all actually have to be light blue. And I've seen a lot of player casual players stress over, oh my gosh, I have to jump this direction this many times and double back and do this and that. I don't think they know that they can just jump on one repeatedly to change the colors. It's not really very hard. That bl light blue block there is why they all have to be light blue. Guess from here we put the orange block down there, grab the key, come up here. We need to make these three blocks any color but pink, since pink is the color of the platform below. Since the one in the middle is already green, that makes green fastest. And the next room is very special. Others have started doing my solution in this room, but I was the first one to do this solution. Go quiet for a second here. Nice. Typically blows casual players' minds when I tell them you can just go straight to the key and straight to the door there. The, the intended solution involves a whole bunch of jumping on trampolines up above to change laser colors so you can run to the key, but as demonstrated, you do not need to do that. In any percent, we would do a map warp here since going through the door in the previous room is what unlocks this location in the map. That's another little skip that I found, but no warps in warpless. Hello, just call me Wade? Or should I just call you Wade? Welcome, I love this game too. If you love this game, you should speedrun it. It's a great speedrun too. Oh, I should have grabbed that envelope at the beginning there. I'm just so used to skipping it in runs. It contains... The, uh, basically the tearful apology from Hugh's mom for being not so great a mom, honestly. Yeah, Hugh's mom is voiced by British actress Anna Acton, and I literally cannot get enough of her voice. She is amazing. This is a room I routinely mess up, even though it's very simple. I recently gave a speedrunner friend a uh, copy of the game just to play for fun. I didn't expect him to run it, and indeed, it sounds like he won't. My room took him half an hour. You know, whoop, of all the rooms that I expect to trip people up, that is not one of them. That is really one of the easiest rooms. This room has a death warp in it in any percent. That's probably the easiest one, but we can't do it in Warpless. Luckily, the solution's pretty easy, too. Do enjoy the solution in this room. Turn backwards as you drop through the middle there. It enables you to push the block here, switch to green. Hits the switch there. Blue and then yellow on the lasers, blue coming back. Just switch to red here and you can just run. I think the game expects you to push the block onto the conveyor belt and use it to block the laser that way, but you can just get rid of the laser. This room would also have a death warp in any percent. The intended solution is a little intricate. Ah, I got the jump. Nice. Okay, bless RNG in the chat, even though there's no RNG in this game for this next trick. Katsuma was there for my practice runs. I did very badly at this. A 
Okay. <laughs> First try every time, except when it's not. And then I miss jumping over a rock. And then There we go. <laughs> the rock rolled a crit. Nice. There's a death warp you can do in this room, but it requires you to do most of the room anyway, so it doesn't save much time. Don't get me wrong, I still do it in the any percent run, because it does still save 7-8 seconds. And it's really quite easy. But it's uh, not one of the ones I'm sad to miss out on in more plus Woo! Almost dropped that on my brain matter. Now this last part, going down and hitting the block there to send the laser across the room. That part is skipped with the death warp. So you need this block to be blue when it reaches the other side. Strictly speaking, it can be any color that's not red or green, but blue is the only other option, so <laughs> it needs to be blue. Use that block to block the laser. Go up here, change this to dark blue. Now here's something I found by accident. You jump here. There's a pixel you can stand on here. <laughs> I found that by accident in my any percent PB, which is still the world record. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I hope you guys appreciate the full context of that. That is something I found by accident in a world record run. I thought I was so dead when I missed that jump and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not dead. I'm standing on nothing. This needs to be orange when it reaches the other side. Okay. There's a death warp in this room that saves a pretty fair chunk of time. Probably 10, 15 seconds. Gotten it in practice a number of times. Never have gotten it in a run. It is the next thing I need to implement to help bring the world record down a little bit. Accidental finds are fun. Accidental... Uh, accidental finds of, oh, I'm actually not dead in a run that was, you know, two minutes ahead of world record pace. Those are kind of heart attack inducing. I mean, I guess it's better than dying, but it's like, oh my god, it's something I sure wish I knew about prior to then. That would have been nice. This is a room that's very easy to screw yourself in, so I need to concentrate just a little bit. Okay, should be fine. Ooh, okay. What you need is for the lasers to be blocked while you're down here, which means you need them to be the same color as the thwomps. But you need them to be different colors from the thwomps to reach the end of the room in the first place. You may have noticed that door Coming through here, that's where the final beaker is. The beakers are the collectibles for the 100% run. So we are getting somewhat near the end of the run. It's not like, it's not like get ready on time time or anything, but there's only a couple of puzzle rooms left. Hit that switch. Come down here, push this. Remember, pushing is generally faster than pulling. Because you can jump against it, push it that little bit, and you're already jumping over it to get on top of it to push it onto uh, the switch. This is one case where I will pull because it lets me, after I turn it red, just turn right around and push. I don't have to jump around it. I still want to be pushing here. So I can do that again. We want that block to be red, so 
The laser will open the door up above. Here's another. Here's one where you need to. You, know, you basically need to pull here. You can do this by pushing the yellow block, but it's way harder to find a safe space to shift colors in. Pulling it means you just shift right where you're standing, and it works every time. It's way more consistent. We got some rolling globes here. We'll just shift to their colors as they fall. Alright, this is the final puzzle room, but it's still not... Don't worry about a timer yet, because there's there's some stuff after the final puzzle. This run, this room used to be like Monka S City. It is completely consistent now. Okay, that's kind of bad. We want that to be pink. Okay. Yep, there we go. This room takes casual players a long time to get through. Certainly took me plural hours. Here's a f not actually the final letter, but an important one. Dearest you. It has been too long. You have grown so much. Your mother. I tried to warn her. I thought that exiling her from the university would protect her. Would protect you. She did not understand that some people choose not to see. I never stole the ring from her, dear. I tried to destroy it before it destroyed her. I now know she had it under control. She knew what she was doing. My intervention shattered the ring, altering your mother's very fabric. My only reprieve is that you were able to follow in her footsteps. That's the shadowy figure we've been trailing throughout the game. It's Dr. Gray. We do not see things as they are here. Instead, we see them as we are. Your mother. She has been waiting for you. I expect she will be thrilled to see how far you've come. Strongly hinted without explicitly saying it, but strongly hinted that Dr. Gray is Hugh's father. It's still not time, by the way. <laughs> if I had set the timing rules for this game, I would have said time ends at the end of the last puzzle room because the end part is very trivial and very slow. This is the only dialogue in the game you can't mash through. I could fall asleep that fast. Okay, time's in about 25 seconds. It's at the end of this dream cave. I will touch the final letter. Time is when I stop moving at the end. I'll say it, but it'll be in the middle of the letter. You cannot always control what happens to you, but you can choose how you see it. Now you can see true colors. You must decide if it is for better or worse. Time. I hope after all this, it is for the better. There's the uh, image of Hugh's mother with Dr. Gray. Dr. Gray voiced by English actor Matthew Wade. He only has the one line, but he's also very good, in my opinion. Um, so what was the time? You said the time never stops you know, through the stream difficulties, so... Do you have a final time for me? 
5728, that is a lot better than practice. You are right, Katsumo. I, I, I'll take that in a marathon any day. Like I say, my PB slash world record for this category is 5559, so that's only a minute and a half off. And, I mean, there were definitely some misskips, so... That was wonderful. That was great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad the stream ended up being okay. I've had lots of internet problems lately. Use a beautiful, lovely game. Really well optimized speedrun. We're always looking for new runners. We've got our Discord. Come check it out if you're interested. Keep those donations coming. It's a really important cause. And I will go ahead and cut the stream now. Thank you again for having me. Bye-bye.